Welcome to Wellspring on the Air. I'm Nicole Alfonso, a therapist at Wellspring and the host of today's show about Wellspring on International Missions. With me today to discuss this very important topic is the founder of Wellspring, Tova Kreps, and Audra Hundell. Together, we want to tell you about why international missions is important to Wellspring and how we can help. So please stay with us. Now, Tova, could you introduce yourselves briefly to our audience as well as Audra? Sure. Uh, so I am the co-founder and the current president of Wellspring Counseling, and we've been around for almost 14 years. And I just am thrilled and honored to lead such a great group of therapists and a team doing outreach ministry and counseling. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, so yes, I am also the founder of the PAVE Center which is located in Jamaica. I look forward to sharing more about that with you um, today. I am also the executive director of the center. And so um, I we started the center in 2018, and I'm just really excited to be here and to share more about that with you. Awesome. Thanks, Hadra. Thanks, Tova. All right. So most of the people listening may not know that Wellspring has done international missions sporadically in the past 14 years, but we're officially adding this international mission outreach uh, as a program in itself. So, Tova, would you tell us about what we have done in the past on the mission field internationally? Sure. Um, honestly, this organization was founded with our co-founder, Christine Schlotman, with a mission mindset. I was born in the mission field in Tanzania, Africa, raised by missionary parents. Christine spent many years in Ecuador as a missionary. And almost all of our first therapists who joined us, we actually, they had to be mission minded, at least to even join our team. And so we have deep roots and a love for mission work. And um, over the years, I we have gone to several places. We've gone to Haiti after the earthquake. We've gone, gone to Haiti and done some mission work with uh, teams where they had sexual abuse issues. We've gone to Rwanda um, and done trauma training with leaders and pastors there. And Christine has done a, a many, many mission trips, um, bringing counseling and mental health education into South America. So we've done a lot of it over the years, uh, reaching out, but it is a, a part of our passion and ministry. We have as a part of our mission is to uh, equip and sustain leaders. And that includes pastors and their staff and ministry leaders and missionaries, because they are frontline workers in the world of mental health. And so our goal is to in the idea of doing international work has been limited to helping the leaders so that they mm. walk away with skills to handle their work. So that again is part of this. We are trauma experts. And so our giveaway and our outreach and our ministry is to equip leaders in this country, but also in other countries um, so that they can do the great work they're already doing. Yes. So being mission-minded means we proactively do outreach to international communities who lack our resources, right? Mental health resources specifically. So what's the vision for Wellspring doing work, this work internationally? What are we wanting to create uh, for these places that don't necessarily have this mental health resources for their people? Well, we want to bring healing for trauma, but really our goal is to create a trauma-informed community. Um, that's that's our desire is to walk, go into a different geographical area, a community. So it could be a church community, a geographical community, a small village or a city or town or something, and to help the leaders in that, again, churches, schools, organizations help those leaders be educated in trauma-informed care. What is it? What is trauma? How do you recover from trauma? How do they recognize and handle people who've been traumatized? And so we equip them with education and then we want to train if they're if they're willing to develop some natural leaders in their community to train them in trauma-informed care more directly, bringing healing, trauma healing to their own constituents. And then we want to bring some healing to those leaders and then hopefully eventually leave behind uh, newly trained trauma-informed specialists in their community to handle their own national issues. So that's the big picture vision is to mm -hmm. create trauma-informed care communities in the communities that have a lot of trauma and probably don't have access to very many counselors, professional counselors. 
Correct. It's an area that really needs this piece, right? This mental health piece. So that leads me to talk about our upcoming trip to Jamaica in July, which is really exciting. I'm part of that team. So we are excited to go on mission in Jamaica. And so Audra, I'm gonna bring you in on here on this conversation. You run an organization in Jamaica called PAVE. Tell us what PAVE stands for and what PAVE's mission is. So um, PAVE stands for Portland Arts and Vocational Education Center. And our mission is to provide uh, vocational training for the at-risk youth living in this part of the community in the hopes of them getting employment. So that's, that's what we do. So we, use, we take a very holistic approach in our, in our skilled training. So we also train them in self-worth and life skills as well. So that's, that's kind of what we do. We're, we're, we're a small uh, vocational training center located in this part of the island of Jamaica, um, but it, it's, it's a mighty punch. Uh, we started in 2018 and to date we've graduated uh, 203 students. And we're right now at a success rate of 70% of these students getting employment. But Wonderful. as I mentioned before, um, they're at risk youth because um, for them to be part to participate in our vocational training, they don't necessarily have to have completed high school. So many of our students um, just they're really literally coming off of the streets. Mm. So as a result of that, you know, they come with certain situations already happening. Um, and so that's why we really um, take them by the hand and give them all the tools they need to succeed so that they can, um, you know, get a job, keep a job, but feel good about themselves during this process. Yes, that's great. That's that definitely aligns with Wellspring as the holistic approach that we have as well. So why are you partnering with Wellspring to bring trauma education to the people in Jamaica? Uh, because first of all, there's such a need. Let's just talk about that. I mean, th uh, Jamaica, the United States, no matter where in the world you need, you are, you live, um, there is trauma all the time everywhere um, and, and mental illness. Um, I have to say that specific to this part of the island called Port Antonio, where our school is, um, there is a, there is just so much, especially mental illness as well as trauma in this particular part of the community, and there's not really much discussion about it. Um, not much is really being done. So that's why um, Pave wants to partner with Wellsprings in what you're already doing. You're you you already have a very successful model module that you're using and I definitely see how it can be a benefit to our to our program to our staff to the, our community to our students and so we just see the need and the need is great and the conversation needs to start we just need to we need to start somewhere and um you know I think this is just a very ideal place to start with training Absolutely. And we're, we're, we're grateful and thankful to join you um, as well, um, because we do have a heart for those who um, can't access services, right? That's definitely part of our mission as well. So, and, and I think of here in the United States, when I think of mental health and mental illness and the numbers that we're, that we're looking at, one in five adults will experience mental uh, illness at some point of their lives. And I think of all the advances we have here in the United States, and then I think of countries uh, that don't have the education, the, the counselors, the, you know, and that I, I assume these numbers could be, and I'm completely assuming here, but could be greater, uh, you know, than, than one in five. So, um, definitely, yes. Yeah. Hey, Nicole, can yes? I jump in here? Because please, I, I, I want to talk do. about how, how this came about in my own, uh, vision casting for it. So, um, Back, uh, I went to on one of my trips to Africa to do some work there um, as a as a counselor. But because my family stayed involved with Af 
African missions for a long time. I had the privilege of being coming alongside those organizations and making some some trips to Africa. And I was in Tanzania and I went to the hospital that my dad helped found. And I thought, well, while I'm here, I'm going to see who the counselors are and what is around here. And and honestly, in that hospital, when I asked for are there counselors here, uh, counselor meant the person who told you if you had AIDS or not. Um, and beyond that, there were no real mental health professional counselors to be had. And I, this was a, quite a number of years ago, but I came back with a real burning desire to bring lay training to gifted lay people. There are wonderful gifted people in communities and in churches all around the world um, who don't have professional therapy around them, but could make a huge difference. And so out of that, I came back and wrote some of the curriculums um, that I thought lay people could do safely on their own um, of listening to people tell their traumatic stories and of bringing some healing to them, um, especially as believers. And so out of that, I kind of developed that. I came back, I piloted it here at some local ministries, and then we've been fleshing it out really for, you know, a decade plus. And so I'm excited now to, to launch that and bring it. We do bring it to our communities, but um, I've been down with Audra and visited um, PAVE and Jamaica. And I think they're just right here in our back door. They speak English. It's an easy place for us to, to go and do that. And they have the need and we have the resources. And so to the, the vision really is to go in and to, to equip them with this education, starting with just education and then seeing, you know, if we can take some next, next step of actual training to to equip them even more fully but education all by itself trauma education goes a very long way and mental illness education just understanding it and as audra said opening the dialogue um, of just maybe breaking some stigmas there and accepting that maybe this could be addressed and then to begin to look at how. So it's a long-standing vision and I couldn't partner with a better group than, than PAVE to get this started. And she mentioned some um, pastors in the community, church leaders, as well as school leaders there, uh, other leaders and believers and nonprofits there that'll be coming and joining this training. So it's it's just a uh, it's kind of a dream come true for me to to begin to to do this more directly and intentionally. Very, very exciting. I'm so excited to be part of it as well. So there are some phases, and you just talked talk about the first phase, which is that piece of educating, right? and and destigmatizing mental health. So can you tell us briefly what each phase means and what what we would be doing in each phase? Yeah, so a second phase, if we decide to do it, if it's appropriate for this community, is that if they gather some leaders, and there are some professional therapists there too, that we hope to pull in and, and, and rope into this and be a part of this leadership, but if they can develop a group of people who would want to become trauma specialists, you know, not therapists, but specialists in this, uh, that we would then come back a second round, spend a little more time and bring that training to them on how to use some of these key skills that they could use as well as to practice them on themselves and each other and bring healing to them. So bringing healing to the leaders and training the leaders would be phase two. Phase three would be to go back again and for that group of leaders to bring some of that healing to some of their own constituents with us coming alongside, coaching, helping, assisting in that process. And then eventually to leave that behind for them and our role with at that point, just be supportive. How do we help you? How do we consult? How do we help you get further training? Uh, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, education, train and heal the leaders, help them, coach them, with their constituents and then uh, supporting them to, to launch on their own. And we'll go to the next area. Yes, they can continue their own work there with their people and we can move on to another area that needs us. Awesome. Okay, so the big question, what, what happens financially? How do we provide for this? Because this is, you know, it's missions. Well, I want to first give the shout out to PAVE, who are paying for most of this, but they've invited us and they are supporting our transportation, our housing, and or most of it, and that's good. We bring in some extra team members. So, so basically, it's the cost of transportation, it's the cost of a little bit of food, it's the cost of some supplies, um, and 
you know, that's basically it. Wellspring is donating our, our time for free. Um, so at this point, specifically to this mission trip, we probably need about a thousand dollars to cover our, our extra expenses, changing some flights and things that are happening. And so uh, just a little bit of travel and that kind of thing. And so that thousand dollars plus what's already been um, donated by PAVE and others that have actually stepped up to this trip um, is will do it. So it's a it's a lot of bang for the buck. And uh, but we are asking for mission support for this. People can donate to Wellspring. They can get a tax uh, write off, and they can designate. They need to designate it specifically to either international missions for Wellspring or Jamaica trip. We'll figure it out if you give us any note that tells us uh, that that's the intention of this specific money this time. Then. In the future, we hope to raise more money to take more trips and including maybe even our therapists finding their own sponsors and that kind of thing. This is not a part of Wellspring's budget. It's above and beyond its missions. And so it's like missions. it means we're going to raise mission funds and we'll do it as God provides. We'll do as much as he gives us the capacity to do. Yes. Like and so Nicole, can I just yes, say Audra. to that uh, really quickly? Um, yeah, the thousand dollars, I mean, to, 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 um, continue to make this grow and, and to be really all that it could be is, is really, um, a really, uh, a decent amount of money. It's not, not terrible, a whole lot, but I just want to, I just feel like I need to say if anybody has ever been to Port Antonio specifically, and seeing this, what is happening as it relates to mental illness with people in the streets. I mean, they're just there all around the, the, the parish, just wandering. The, you would understand the, how mm. great this need is and how much this particular, particular parish needs this help. And um, so I just, I just am so excited, number one, to, to, to have you guys, to be able to host you, to start this movement of helping, um, helping this, us figure out how to, how to do this. Cause at this point, we, I don't think our, our parish really knows, um, just because of what we see and it's a reality. It's true. It's happening right now. It has not been addressed and it needs to be addressed. And mm -hmm. this could be the start. It's huge. Yes. Thank you, Audra. For... Will, yeah, it is huge. And it will cost more too to go to the phase two and phase three. We know it will, but we have to just start. So we start where we are and we make a little dent and then hopefully people get passionate with us about, wow, I'd like to make this kind of difference in a whole community and join us in this cause for phase two and three and four. And, and um, so, but the, yes, the visit, I got to go there in, in um, January uh, this year and I felt it, it was palpable walking around mm -hmm. the streets and in the community. And so it's time to, to bring this kind of sustainable help. It's not just a, a, a one-time mission trip and you do one thing and you're gone. This is, this is something that can build for generations to bring about real change. So that's exciting. Absolutely. So I, we always like to wrap up our times together here at our podcast, talking about the biblical piece of the topic. And obviously this is missions. This is what we're called to do as believers, as followers of Jesus. Obviously it's a commandment to love each other just as he has loved us. And part of doing that is offering our gifts to those that do not have what we have so that we can um, help them. Right. And so I have a few verses that I'd like to read um, because this is really part of who we are and um, who we should be as believers. So each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We have gifts that they need in Jamaica. And so we're going to go and give them our gifts for healing. Um, don't forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. It is sacrificial, but we're willing and we want to be there and go. Uh, and don't withhold good from someone who deserves it when it is in your power to do so. We have um, just the ability to do it and we're asking for your support and your help. Um, 
and really we are to carry each other's burdens and this is this is part of it this is part of what what we're we're doing so and lastly acts 20 34 says in everything i've shown you that by working hard we must help the weak and this way we remember the lord's words it is more blessed to give than to receive so i will wrap up with that anybody want to add anything no Thanks all right for listening. Glad to stay to the end and thank you audra you're most welcome. It's my pleasure. Looking forward to working long, long time, years and years of, of working together. Yes. So it is time to close out the show. We hope you learned some valuable information about why we believe missions is important, international missions specifically. So thank you again for joining us. Um, if you are interested in giving us some feedback, please encourage us and let us know you're listening by sending comments or questions to on the air at wellspringmiami.org. It is time to wrap up. This is Nicole Alfonso with Wellspring on the Air because hearts and minds matter.